Are you curious about how much power is being used in your house? Would you like to talk to Sense using Google Assistant? Stay tuned, and we're going to talk about this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about using Google Assistant or Google Home, however you want to refer about it, with Sense. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you're paying for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, here's what we're going to be covering. At this point, I've had Sense up and running for about four weeks. So we're going to go over what I'm seeing so far. Then we're going to talk about connecting Google Home to Sense. And then finally, we'll go over a few of the commands and kind of give you an idea of the response that you can expect. Now, let's go ahead and get started. Well, now I'm in week four of my experience with the Sense device, still getting some, some kinks uh, ironed out in it. Some of it is it's how the Sense device is picking up on certain items. And I'm still got like some things like you'll see down here at the bottom. Uh, it's calling something light one. I have yet to be able to figure out which light it's talking about. And I'm probably just going to break down and get a hold of folks at Sense and see if there's some way I can better isolate uh, what's going on. Because I really, I mean, not that I want to know down to an individual bulb. I mean, it would be nice, but something being able to break down more of the devices, because that's where I've just, I'm still not where I think I can be. Now, the nice thing is, is it does keep a, a good log. And we're going to look down here and you see where it's got Instant Pot. And now that's one when it did ID that one. I forget how it actually came up. Came up as Heat 1, I think. And finally figured out by the timing what device it was. So I renamed it. And it's been, for the most part, pretty much calling that one right now. If we tap on the little down button, then you can see today when it's been going on and off. And that's when I had a little bit of a late breakfast. So it's nice to know that how the event it's cycling. So it's on for a little bit, off for a little bit. So that helps you kind of know what's, what's going on. And then the uh, garage door, uh, that now you got to hit this just right. So let's go down here. Cause if you don't hit that little icon right on the nose, it's not going to give you that. So it, you're seeing that, it was basically the first one was when the door went up. Second one was when the door came down. So there's, it's learning how to interpret the data that you've got. So really it's, it's continuing to get better as a lot of it, as I'm understanding what's going on. The, you know, the, the wattage and usage kilowatt hours is something that's still, it's going to be several months before I really think I'm going to be, uh, have a good feel for interpreting what's going to be good and bad. And probably it's going to take really about a year to kind of get a good baseline with the different seasons, but we're getting there. So if we go into labs, I don't think labs has added anything recently and no, they haven't. The floating neutral is nice because as I said in a previous video, that is something that if you do have something that's not grounded right, particularly in the house and it's something that requires a third wire ground, you could start having problems or possibly risk a little bit of shock. And, and I have run into those situations. So that's, that's good to be paying attention to that one. Uh, power quality, and it should come up here in just a second. There we go. Well, it came up and then decided to refresh. So that's, it's doing better. I think it's now that we're moving into the fall time of the year when I'm shooting this video and the air conditioners are running less. So the power seems to be staying a little, uh, more calmer the uh, voltage leg now at this point l1 has been running a little to, to the low side and then l2 went high so there's probably always going to be a little bit of juggling on that one so really that is something that it, it's it's nice to have this kind of information because if i start having some strangeness or quirks come up at least i've got s some uh not data but at least i've got some where that I can stand my ground with the power company and say, Hey, look, this is what on-site equipment is recording. And then if they want to dispute it, fine, bring out your own chart recorder. And trust me, they do have those available. They don't like to bring them out, but they can. So let's go ahead and move on to the piece of setting up with Google home to talk to sense. 
as you are installing your latest smart home device, grab a copy of my smart home checklist. This will help you record information about each device as you set it up. This will prove helpful when you need to find out where to get the firmware updates from or support on that device. You will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information to anyone. For this particular segment, I'm just going to use just my smartphone. You've seen the web interface several times. And I'll use that from time to time in some of the videos that I still have to do, but just to make things a little bit easier for everyone concerned. So let's move on over to the smartphone. We'll tap on my home and then we'll click on connected devices. And then we will go down here to Google Assistant, tap on Open Google Assistant, and hopefully it will get us right into where we need to be. Tap on link. And yes, we want a link sense. Yes, we're going to authorize. We're ready to try a few commands. Let's go ahead and try a few of the commands and let's see what Google will get from sense. Okay, Google, ask sense how much power I am using. Your home is using 445 watts. Okay, Google. Ask Sense if Freezer is running. No, your freezer is off. It's an interesting journey, and it's still one that's that's not over yet. Sense has announced a new cable you can get for it, so if you really want to tack on to other devices, and that's what I may have to do to help figure out why it's not seeing the furnace when it kicks in. We'll just have to move in that direction and we'll keep trying new things. If you're watching this on YouTube, and you probably are at this point, you're going to see videos on the screen to the, similar to the one that you're watching right now or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.